Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the Rodian Schwartz LCX. In this presentation, we'll show you how to configure and use the LCX to perform basic measurements of resistance, capacitance, and inductance. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with how LCR meters work, how they measure impedance, and common impedance measurement results. If you're not already familiar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding LCR Meters, before beginning this presentation. Let's start with a brief overview of the LCX. The LCX is a high-performance benchtop LCR meter based on an auto-balancing bridge. It can make a wide range of complex impedance measurements, including basic values of inductance, capacitance, and resistance, and can also calculate derived parameters, such as Q, from measured values. When necessary, the LCX can provide bias, either from an internal or an external source. There are two basic models of the LCX. The LCX100, which has a maximum frequency of 300 kHz, and the LCX200, whose maximum frequency can optionally be increased from 500 kHz to 1 MHz or 10 MHz. A family of different test fixtures are also available to support different types of components. As we'll show in this presentation, the LCX is easily configurable via its touchscreen display and intuitive front panel controls. But the LCX can also be controlled remotely, either using a remote GUI or by using industry standard Skippy commands. There are six basic steps in using the LCX. These are selecting and attaching the test fixture and device under test, selecting the type of device under test, configuring the test signal, performing corrections, choosing measurements, and reviewing the results. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to configure and perform each of these steps. When using an LCR meter, different types of fixtures are used to connect the device under test to the meter. These fixtures are attached to the four BNC connectors on the front of the LCX. The device under test here a capacitor, is then connected to or inserted into the fixture. There are a wide variety of different fixtures available, depending on the type or form factor of the device under test. Let's take a closer look at some of the more common test fixtures. The LCX Z1 is intended for use with through-hole components that have axial or radial leads, which are then inserted into the slots. Another way to measure components with leads or terminals is using the LCX Z2 Kelvin clip fixture. This is the fixture we'll be using in most of our examples in this presentation. For leadless service mount components, the dot can be inserted into the LCX Z3 fixture, and PCB mounted components can be measured using the tweezers of the LCX Z4 fixture. Please see the user documentation for more information on these and other LCX fixtures. The next step in using the LCX is correction. Correction should always be run at the start of a measurement session because it can be used to remove or reduce the effect of test fixtures. This in turn improves the accuracy of our measurement results. There are two ways of accessing the correction settings. One is by pressing the settings hard key and then choosing measurement open short load correction. Alternatively, you can jump to the correction menu directly by pressing the comp hard key on the front panel of the LCX. There are three different types of corrections, open, short, and load, and each of these is selected and run independently. These corrections can be run for the currently configured measurement frequency or for the entire measurement range. These are called spot and full corrections respectively. After a correction type is selected, configured, and enabled, pop-up windows provide instructions for each step. Here, for example, we're instructed to short the measurement terminals by connecting them together. The method by which we short the terminals will be different depending on the test fixture type. Spot corrections usually take 15 to 20 seconds, whereas the full correction usually takes about a minute, depending on the LCX's frequency range. Small O, S, and L icons indicate which types of corrections are active. Short and open are the most common correction types. An open correction doesn't require any additional accessories, but in some cases, short correction does require some type of device to short the two terminals together. Load correction, on the other hand, always requires the use of a reference component. This is usually either a resistor or a capacitor. 
the load's resistive and reactive components must be precisely known, and these are entered into the load correction menu. In addition, the reference component should be similar in size and impedance to the intended device under test. When properly executed, a load correction can further minimize any complex errors in the measurement result. Before running a load correction, both short and open corrections must be run, and as before, a pop-up window provides instructions on how to run the correction. Finally, note that load correction is always a spot correction. That is, load correction is always performed only for a given measurement frequency. Now that we've connected our test fixture and performed corrections, the next step is to select a measurement function. The LCX has four basic measurement functions, inductance, capacitance, resistance, and transformer testing. Please note that transformer testing is covered in a separate presentation. The measurement function can be selected using the front panel buttons, but the dot type can also be automatically detected by pressing the auto key on the front panel. Before measuring, we also have to define the basic parameters of the test or stimulus signal applied to the component. These are frequency in hertz, level in volts, and range in ohms. Frequency and level are fairly self-explanatory, and range provides a rough guide as to the expected impedance. Note that range can be manually set or can be determined automatically, with automatic range determination requiring slightly more measurement time compared to a manually configured value. The numeric values of frequency and level can be entered using the GUI, and they can also be changed using the knob and cursor keys on the front panel. Once the test signal parameters have been configured, the LCX can make measurements in one of two ways, either continuously or as a single measurement based on a trigger event. The measurement mode hard key on the front panel is used to toggle between these two modes, and this icon is used to show that continuous mode is active. When in trigger mode, the trigger source used to start a measurement can be the trigger hard key on the front of the LCX, an external trigger signal at the trigger input connector on the rear of the LCX, or a remote control command. As measurements are being run, the display mode hard key can be used to select how results are shown. The default is the dual display, which shows two pairs of measurement values. Here, series inductance and Q on the top, and Z and phase angle on the bottom. Pressing display mode again changes to a large single display of the first pair. Values can also be displayed as a graph, which we'll cover a little later in this presentation. To change the measurements shown in each pair, simply tap on the parameters and choose from the list of available measurements. In addition to basic parameters, additional measurement settings are available either by pressing the settings hard key or the gear shape settings icon in the main GUI. We only have time to cover a few of these here, so please see the documentation if you're interested in learning more about some of these settings. The most important of these additional settings is measurement speed. This is the speed at which measurements are made when the LCX is operating in continuous mode. Note that the accuracy of measurements will decrease with increasing speed, and that at low frequencies, the LCX will reduce the measurement speed automatically. There are three different speeds. Slow corresponds to about 1.5 measurements per second. Medium corresponds to about 10 measurements per second, and fast corresponds to approximately 15 measurements per second. The configured measurement speed is shown as an icon in the main GUI toolbar. Another important parameter is cable length. As you may already know, cables have inductance and capacitance that vary as a function of their length, and these in turn affect measurement accuracy. Cable length correction, therefore, is useful in compensating for these effects. When using test fixtures with leads, such as the LCXC2 Kelvin clip fixture, shown here, the cable length should be set to 1 meter to reflect the length of the cables. Before we conclude our presentation, we'll briefly cover a few of the more advanced features of the LCX. These are bias, binning, dynamic measurements, and remote control. Bias refers to superimposing a voltage or current on a test signal. This is done to shift the operating point of a component and allows measurement under the component's expected operating conditions. For example, some types of capacitors may require a positive voltage bias, and some types of inductors require higher current levels 
in order to make accurate measurements. The LCX can add bias in two different ways, both internally and externally by connecting a power supply to the external bias connectors on the rear of the LCX. Configuring bias is very straightforward. Simply press the bias level hard key or the appropriate field in the GUI and enter the desired bias level. Note that the level of an external bias signal is automatically sensed and reported by the LCX. Once bias is configured, the bias enable key is used to turn bias on and off. Another useful function on the LCX is something called binning. Binning refers to sorting electrical components based on some measured characteristic. The LCX makes a triggered measurement as each component is attached and then categorizes it or places it into a bin based on a predefined configuration file. Up to eight categories or bins can be defined. For example, here we're testing one kilo ohm resistors with a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. After defining and loading our file containing resistance and tolerance values, the LCX then measures and categorizes each attached resistor based on this file. Here, we've tested 139 resistors so far, with 26 being plus or minus 1%, 73 being plus or minus 5%, 32, including the currently tested resistor, are plus or minus 10%, and 8 were outside of the defined ranges. In addition to displaying statistics and the current bin on the screen, the LCX can also output a signal to indicate which bin a component should be assigned to. In many cases, measurements are made at a fixed frequency. The dynamic impedance measurement option is used to make measurements over a range of values. For example, here we're varying the frequency from 1 kHz to 1 MHz in 1 kHz steps. After enabling the dynamic impedance measurement, the LCX will sweep the configured parameter and make measurements at the defined steps. These values are then stored in a CSV formatted log file. At the end of the sweep, the values are then also used to graphically display the measurement results. The last topic we'll cover is remote control. There are two methods for remotely controlling the LCX. The first is a remote GUI, which can be accessed through any VNC client. The second method is programmatic control using industry standard Skippy commands. This method of remote control is most often used when operating the LCX in an automated environment. Both remote control methods provide access to all controls and measurement results supported by the LCX. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodian Schwartz LCX is a high-performance benchtop LCR meter that can be used to measure a wide variety of components and devices using different measurement fixtures. The basic steps in making measurements are attaching the fixture and the device under test, selecting the type of device, configuring test signal parameters, performing corrections, choosing measurements, and reviewing the results. The LCX also has numerous additional features and advanced functions, such as bias, binning, and dynamic impedance measurements. And although we've used the LCX's front panel and GUI-based touchscreen in this presentation, the LCX can also be remotely configured and controlled using a VNC client or Skippy-based programming commands. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the Rodian Schwartz LCX. If you'd like to learn more about LCR meters, other impedance and transformer measurements, or applications of LCR meters, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.